Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to everyone here at Emmanuel and to those who are watching and following our service on Zoom. There are a few announcements this morning. The newsletter will not be out until next week, so you'll look forward to the newsletter next week. But this week, you can look forward to our card party on Friday night. We have a lot of fun, and uh, you're cordially invited to be there and bring a friend or come alone. We'll find you a partner. We play Euchre, Mexican Train, and we can play other games if you wish. So Friday night at 7. And other news? The annual meeting will be held next Sunday, March the 12th, following our morning service. And there is a note here as well to let us know that the church council has voted to rent our church sanctuary to a Spanish Pentecostal church under the leadership of Pastor Wilma. The building will be rented on Saturday from 6 to 8 p.m. and on Sunday from 2 to 6. And there will be more information given out at the annual meeting. And current envelope users are reminded to put their name and envelope number on their weekly offering envelopes. We had them purchased this year without the numbers, so it's up to us to make sure we put our numbers on. Now, for celebrations, are there any birthdays? Any birthdays coming up this week? No one's getting older? <laughs> no one? How about anniversary? Anybody having an anniversary this week? Nobody got married in March? No. Okay, I'm sure someone somewhere is having an anniversary and we'll think of them. But for now, we will have the lighting of the Christ candle to begin our morning worship. This morning, we continue our Lenten journey. Following the Savior of the world, who took the path to life by choosing death, who chose a cross rather than wealth, and because of his commitment to our salvation, Christ is indeed our light. We worship Christ in our midst. The call to worship. We gather as a people for whom faith matters. O oh God, deepen our faith. We gather as a people rejoicing in memory. O oh God, hallow our tradition. We gather as a people committed to the church. O oh God, give us joy in serving Jesus Christ. We gather as a people who proclaim the good news. In word and deed, your justice and compassion shine, O oh God. The hymn, Spirit of Gentleness.
Let us pray. Give us a spiritual rebirth, O oh God. As we read the word and receive inspiration. Encounter the saints and follow the example. Feel support in the community and give of our talents. Reflect on Jesus Christ and renew our commitment. We know there is joy when we receive inspiration through your word. Encourage when we follow the examples of the saints. Our faith comes alive when we give and receive support in the community. And we know peace when we reflect on Jesus. Amen. As we reflect in Jesus' presence, we are able to put words around some of our deepest feelings and thoughts. Christ speaks again gently. You are a gifted child of God. What untapped gifts, what talents are kept hidden? And what submerged skills are you called on to use to bring freedom and joy to others? The eyes of Jesus never leave yours. What one thing can you do in the company with your faithful friends to bring closer to God's realm of compassion, justice, inclusion, and peace? Jesus' eyes meet ours today. Not a word is spoken. But we sense joy flooding in on us. Burdens are lifted. Challenges are clarified. And the way ahead will not be easy. But we are ready to set out. Jesus blesses us. Jesus says, my peace I leave with you. Still we fear. We leave his presence. Today we return to his company and are gifted with these words. You have my peace. Amen. The hymn, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart.
Thank you and good morning. Sometime last week I got some news I wish to share with you, but that, this is not the children's story. An email came in from the movers. The people who move my stuff or our stuff from Durham to and should have delivered them to, to our new residence. Oh, we have found the balance of your items. Make arrangement ASP. What is it? So that we would drop them off. It's almost a year. So I remember during that time when we, were lose, when we lost the things, I said to you, let's don't worry too much about them. They are material things. And prayer and patience yield the reward. I just hope that when they bring them, they don't charge. And when they bring them, they are in good condition. But I greet you who are worshiping with us, and especially those who are worshiping on Zoom, a special good morning to you. Have you ever thought about the dropouts in life? Do you know that word, dropout? The dropouts in life Have you ever met a dropout who is satisfied and happy and comfortable, especially when they drop out from something that is good? Take for instance, I don't think we have a lot of school dropouts here. But in the Caribbean and some other places, we have a lot of school dropouts in communities. Some do not even finish primary school or junior school. Or sometimes there are people who join a choir or people who are in music school and they drop out. And most dropouts always have regrets. I have a friend who was an attorney, and she said, my mom sent me to piano lessons when I was young. And after grade two, I dropped out. And now I am regretting it. You see, to be successful in life, we have to be determined. And every road that leads to success calls for us to carry a cross. There will always be bumps in those roads. There would always be challenges. Sometimes, we slip and fall. Sometimes we fail. But be careful. Don't be a dropout. The success is at the end of the road. We have a volcano in my country, in St. Vincent. It erupted two or three years ago, and it was really nasty. People had to keep their, whole, their, their homes locked down because of the ash 
and it was terrible. Stores closed, hardly any drinking water, thanks be to the countries who sent drinking water in bottles to the country, to our country. And sometimes, when I was a little boy, in scouts, we used to climb that mountain, the volcanoes on the top of the mountain, the highest mountain peak. And we used to climb that mountain and use ropes to get down into the vent of the volcano. We would camp there, play soccer, set up our tents, drink the water from there, from the crater lake. And then when it is time to get home, we climb up using the rope again with our knapsacks on our backs up to the top of the mountain and then walk down to get back to the valley. It was quite an adventure. But there were many scouts who never made it to the top. Because halfway through, when they look up and saw the challenges and the rest of the journey, they dropped out. If you want the view from the highest mountain peak, you have to be determined and be patient. Let us pray. Sometimes our faith is feeble and weak. And we focus on what we have to do. And not on the energy you give to us to do it. We look at what is ahead. and not the strength we have to make it to the end. And we are guilty many times, even in our Christian walk, to be called dropouts. Because we look and miss the things that are behind us. And we fail to crave for the things that are ahead of us. Lord, when you call us and you are leading us, the freshness of your grace lies ahead. The power of your peace is before us and the cross is held within our view as we press forward. Give us the will to press forward, be it in school, be it in our church, be it in our faith journey. Give us the strength to press forward. And may we obey. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is the 121st Psalm. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. 
The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. The next reading is from Romans chapter 4, reading verses 1 to 5 and 13 to 17. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who does not work, but trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs. Faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but there is no law, neither is there transgression. For this reason, the promise depends on faith in order that it may rest on grace so that it may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In reading from John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. <coughs> Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with that person. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can, can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you the teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, 
yet you do not receive your, our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him.
Thank you to all who have prepared this sanctuary for worship, the communion stewards and those who will be assisting in the communion service. to the technicians and the musician and the choir and all who have come together to make this act of worship a blessing. We trust that you will go home feeling challenged and blessed. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I've titled the message, A Call to Leave the Crossroad. A Call to Leave the Crossroad. Lent sometimes meets us at the crossroads of life with different pathway, pathways before us. The season sometimes urges and demands that it, we take one of the pathways that lie before us. Two courses that are before us are set out in the scripture in Genesis 12, 1 to 4. The story of Abraham and Sarah and the Gospel of John chapter 3, 1 to 17, the story of Nicodemus. The story of Abraham and Sarah are the defining journey of the biblical faith. God called Abraham to leave his safe and familiar place to go to a new land. A land without a name. To be blessed by God. And to be a blessing to those around him. Abraham and Sarah obeyed. They went. Because of their obedience and faith, generations after generations have taken this leap of faith and have proven that God never forsake those who obey God. This God who called Abraham and calls us to take the leap of faith is the only self-starter and can make newness for us as the God who presides over death and resurrection of Jesus to make newness for the whole world. Contrast this path of faith taken by Abraham and Sarah to that taken by Nicodemus when Jesus summoned him to the most radical but life-changing journey. Jesus said to Nicodemus, a well-established intellect in the Jewish tradition, for you to inherit the kingdom of God, you must take the journey to a new self. 
to a new life. Words used to substitute, you must be born again, or better, born from above. Born of God, both by and into God's goodness. Recreated with new identity by God's generous mercy. In the text, Nicodemus did not get it. Even though he went to ask Jesus, what must I do? When the answer was given, he did not get it. Unlike Abraham, Nicodemus did not get it because he does not want to obey. He does not want to leave his familiar grounds, his status and acquaintances to seek the new self. So by the time Jesus reaches one of the most powerful verses in the Gospel of John, verse 16 of chapter 3, Nicodemus is off the scene. He disappears. Or according to Walter Brueggemann, a biblical scholar, he drops out which suggests that he does not want to leave self behind. The contrast is clear. Abraham willingly accepts God's call to leave behind the old self, familiar territory to go. He obeys, and the blessings to him and the generations following his lead are beyond humans imagining. Nicodemus is called to seek that new life by seeking rebirth from above. And he count the cost, value his earthly power and prestige above what his soul calls him to do. And he walked away, becomes a dropout, or fades away from the scene. The sad part to Nicodemus' story is that such a man of great intel intellect, with such authority and influence, never used the opportunity to find lasting and satisfying value in life. He never moved a step further to explore, to discover, and to enjoy God's wondrous calling. He remains at the crossroad, and he counts the cost. Abraham obeyed. And with great possibilities and opportunities far beyond his imagining, a simple, ordinary village man became a blessing to many generations. The scripture never gave the impression that Abraham was as well schooled as Nicodemus. But the power lies not in humans' intellect and earthly achievement. The power lies in our faith and obedience. When we answer to the call, go and we go. Crossroads could be one of the most miserable places to be at or standing at. 
No one should choose to remain at the crossroads of life. It is a difficult place to be. Abraham got away from the crossroad of life by obeying God's call. While Nicodemus remains or drops out because he did not want to take time to understand and to appreciate what it means to be born from above. With all his intelligence and influence, he could not make an impact. Lent calls us to do personal examinations. And you know where you are. We all know where we are standing. Some of us are seeing the paths before us because we are at the crossroads. But we are afraid to take the leap of faith because we are afraid of the unknown. Well, if everyone in the world is to be afraid of the unknown, then there will be no discovery. When God calls us to leave the familiar for the unknown, is because God wants to use us to make great discovery in faith, in our lives, and in his world. If we are lingering at the cross road of life, and we are lingering for too long, because of our love for the old self, for identity, for friends, for family, for community, for riches and fame. Then the call this Lenten season is upon you and upon me. Go. Seek, go from where you are comfortable and find a new life. Seek the things that are above, says Paul, and the Spirit of God will reign in you. Go from being selfish and self-centered to being a person who is willing to sacrifice in faith to make a difference in the world. And seek beyond our earthly gains and intelligence. to find God's leading and to find that new life that our soul longs for. I know this Lenten season, many of us are longing for something. Deep within our hearts, our consciences are speaking. You need more from God. You need more faith. You need a new life. You need to be reborn from above.
Don't be a Nicodemus. But hear the words of Jesus and seek what that rebirth means as you open your life to the words and the truth and the grace that the Christ of the world offers. God be in our head and in our understanding, in our minds and in our thinking, in our eyes and in our looking, in our ears and in our hearing, in our hearts and in our obeying. Amen. Receive now your gifts of offering. Let us pray. New life is your gift to us, O oh God. May these gifts bring new life. Peace to the suffering, faith to the doubting, a word to the questioning, a light to the dying. Bless these our gifts, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, your blessing for us. Amen. Today we share in the sacrament of communion. And in preparation we sing the hymn. Jesus, you lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly.
Dear friends, we are going to Jerusalem with Jesus. We will suffer the trial with him, resisting evil. But come first to the table where there is food for the journey. With hearts full of joy and Giving thanks to God our Maker. And all our grace. We are right to praise you, faithful God. You answer sin with grace. You guide our way with steps toward home. You are mending for the broken, safety for the poor, belonging for the outcast, strength for the weak, and pardon for the sinner. Reveal your kindness in every sorrow, your mercy even in death. All your creatures see your works, they sing your steadfast love. We too declare your wonder and grace as with angel and saints we say, Remembering and giving Together, remembering and giving thanks. Now, O oh God, we remember Jesus. Be seated, please. A moment of silence. In remembering Jesus, remember the suffering ones in our world. That war in Ukraine, that is causing great devastation. People in Turkey and Syria continue to live out in the cold, grieve and mourn the death of their loved ones. They lack the basic necessity to life. the hungry ones in the world who have no means of income, no food, but more so the hungry ones who hungry for Jesus, who have been told time and time again, you must be born from above. But who like Nicodemus, disappearing from the scene, those are for congregation. But around this table this morning, remember Linda Brissett. Elaine Witter, the entire Taylor family, and all those who have to stay away from worship because they are not well. Today, with this feast, and in this feast, Lord, as a community of faith, we share with Marge Borden. And we hold her up before your throne of grace. 
that the light of your glory may shine upon her and through her. Grant her your peace. Continue the liturgy. Jesus fasted and prayed. He was tempted and tried. He relied on you for everything. He was obedient to you and scorned by the powers of this world. He confounded the hearty and gave hope to the humble. He was betrayed and deserted. He died between thieves and was buried in a borrowed grave. You gave him new light. He lives even now, our healer and friend. He loved us well, loved us to the end, and loves us still. Even on the night of betrayal, he ate supper with his friends. Holy Spirit, come. Make all things new. Bless this bread which you have given and the human hands that have made. Let it become for us the bread of life. Bless also this cup, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Let it become for us the cup of salvation. Bless us also who eat and drink, that in this sharing we may know the living Christ, who is with us now and to the end of the age. Nourish us by these gifts to be willing servants of your world until the new age comes and every creature beholds it. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to say as we sing the Lord's Prayer. Bread of life broken for you. The cup of life given to you. This morning we have four persons assisting with the sacrament. And we come to the center aisle and depart on both the left and the right. There'll be two stations at the front and Melanie would give the choir the sacrament.
The table is open. All who are willing, come and share. Take and eat and be refreshed. Let us give thanks together. Thank you, merciful God, for gladness in this bread and cup, for love that cannot die, for peace the world cannot give, for joy in the company of friends, for the splendors of creation, and for the mission of justice you have made our own. Give us the gifts of the Holy Communion, oneness of heart, love for neighbors, forgiveness of enemies, the will to serve you every day, and life that never ends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, folks. Thank you. The last hymn we're about to sing is dedicated to our sister Marjorie.
burden who continues to go downhill health-wise. She has served this church well and has committed herself as a servant. And have said to me recently, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not even afraid of death because I am at peace with God. This is our favorite hymn. And we sing it to the glory of God as we dedicate it to Marjorie Borden. Precious Lord, take my hand. May the peace of Christ enfold you. And the, love of God will us. the Holy Spirit inspire us and those we love in our time and beyond all time. Amen. Go now in peace.
week of possibilities are ahead of you. Yours to enjoy. God bless you.